welcome back to my channel miss crochet and coffee here back with another crochet tutorial and what i'm going to call teach me thursday today's lesson will be on color pulling now i know it's scary to a lot of people and a lot of people just don't get it um my friend emily if you've watched my previous videos you know about emily she's a crochet friend of mine from back in pennsylvania she will not touch color pulling and so I'm hoping that making this video will make it easier not only for her to give it a try, at least, but for you guys as well. Because I got such rave reviews on my graph beanie, so I'm hoping that maybe me showing you how to color pull will get a lot more people into doing it. Or at least giving it a try, because you have to try at least once, okay? So first thing you want to do is you want to pick out a baronated yarn. I've picked out pink camo. It seems to be very popular. I'm not big on camo, but it is what it is. You also want to pick out a hook. I would suggest a five and a half, which is what I have here. Um, you can go with a five. I don't know about smaller hooks, mainly because I normally use, like, my go-to hook is a five and a half. And I love my clover hooks, which is what I have here. Five and a half, five, those are the, 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 the sweet spots for color pulling. And because it's planned color pulling, when you have your yarn, which if you don't have it, just pause the video here and go get your yarn. Go on now, get, go get your yarn. Give it a try. But once you have your yarn, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out a small section of it like I have here. Now I've pulled out already the sequence. Now with varinated yarn, there's always a sequence. So for this one, you have light pink, you have dark pink, you have brown, and then you should go into a green. And then the green will take you back to light pink. All right. And I'm using natural sunlight today, so this might look a little brighter. That light pink actually looks white, but I promise you it's light pink. At least that's what I was told this morning when somebody told me, because as you know, I'm colorblind, so yeah. Anyways, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start off and you, you would think, like most crochet projects, you start off from the beginning. No. No. You're going to pull that until the color changes. So right there where the color changes, see how it changes right there? Let me get this in here so you can see it. See how it changes? That's where you're going to make your slip stitch. Right there. So on your hook, you should have the previous color, which is your tail, which don't worry about that long tail. You can cut that later or we'll show you how to get rid of that long tail. But you're going to tighten it on your hook here. And essentially, your first step is going to be to chain out one sequence. Now, when I say sequence, that means you're going to chain out, You, like I said, you have the light pink, the dark pink, the brown, and the green. And then it goes back to light pink, correct? All right. You're going to chain out that sequence. And as you do that, I'm going to work up mines here. And I'll meet you back at the beginning. All right, so now when you've hit this point, as you can see, I did one color sequence. I have the light pink as my tail, and I started it off with the dark pink, the brown, and the green. Now when you end your stitches, now there's no definite amount of stitches you have to make because it depends on how wide and big, ooh, excuse me, how wide and big the color changes are. So see how it's a little smaller here than it is here and then smaller again here. So there's more brown than pink and green. So when you chain, you essentially want to chain until you start that pattern up again. So as soon as it started back at the light pink, I made one more chain so that the color changes on the hook. You see that? So it went from green and then it's going back into the light pink. All right. So then what you're going to do next is the moss stitch. Now the moss stitch is a single crochet chain one. Okay, real easy. And what you're going to do is when you go up to your next row, you're going to skip three. One, two, three. You're going to single crochet in that fourth stitch from the hook. And then you're going to chain one. Now you can continue doing that the whole way through. But when you're doing that, you're going to skip a stitch because that chain one is going to count as a stitch. So you're going to skip a stitch, go into that next stitch, single crochet, chain one. 
and you're going to repeat doing this until the color changes. Now you may or may not use that entire tail and that's okay because you essentially only want to go as far as the color change goes. So you see here, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. So I got my chain one, so I want to do my single crochet. I'm so used to doing half double crochets when it comes to stuff that I always, for some, some reason, do half doubles when I'm trying to like show people how to do single crochets. So that might happen, but I'll correct myself. I'll try to at least. So yeah, so you're going to do it. Single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch into the next stitch. And it'll look like this. And you're going to keep doing this until the pattern repeats itself. So it's just chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch. Now you also want to make sure your tension is correct. Or I'm not saying correct, I'm sorry. You want to make sure your tension is consistent because if your tension is not consistent, your color pulling will not work. So you have to make sure that your your tension is consistent. Now, when I say tension for if you're new to crocheting, tension is how tight your stitches are, like how tight you pull that hook or that yarn. Because if you have it loose in some areas and tight in others, then it's not going to pull correctly because some of the stitches are going to be bigger than the other ones. So you want to make sure that you have consistent stitches. So you want to make sure your tension's on point. Because if not, then it's not going to look like what you want. And then you're going to be coming yelling at me saying that you couldn't figure it out. And I'm going to be like, your tension isn't right. All right. So oh, there I go. Try to do it again. And you're going to moss stitch the whole way until you hit that color change. And as you can see, it's starting to change colors again. We're going back into the green. And if at any point in time I go too fast for you, please feel free to stop and pause the video so that you can go ahead and uh, do this for yourself. But when you get to the end of your chain, it should look like that. Now, I know you're wondering, well, what about the rest of this? That we need not worry about for right now. So we're going to take a second and let you guys get to this point where the color change for that pink is on your hook. All right. So now that you've gotten to the point where the color that started at this end, which was the light pink for me, is now on this end, you have it on your hook. Well, you don't want it on your hook because if you have it on your hook now and you try to go up, the colors won't, they won't pull nicely. They'll actually stack on top of each other, which is not what we want here. So once you get that color on your hook, you're going to take it apart by one stitch. Okay. So I still have my chain one on there, but you want it to be over by one stitch because then that's what's going to create that kind of Argyle pattern look. So I pulled out one of my single crochets and I'm just going to turn it. Now, when it comes to your tail, we'll address that later. But for right now, we're going to leave that there just for you have something to anchor your, because if you're like me, I like to kind of hold on to that. So you're going to turn your work. And like I said, remember, I still have that chain one on there. When you go up to your next row, you're going to actually chain two, which since you already have one on there, you just chain one more. Okay. Next what you're going to do is go into that first chain one space. Chain one, you're going to do a single crochet in there. And that way your color change comes up after that stitch. See how that is? See how you still have the green here and then it changes to the pink up top here, which is exactly what it does at the end here. So then you're just going to keep going the whole way back. Single crochet chain one. The moss stitch is a very easy stitch to get down. It's all repetition. A lot of crochet patterns are repetition. So if you're already a crocheter, you know all about repetition. This is just literally repetition. You just have to make sure you're consistent. And one of my key tips is, unless you have a significant amount of time to work on it, 
this wouldn't be something that I would work on and then put down because then it gets harder to keep your tension consistent. So normally when I do this, I try to do it when uh, either my kids aren't home or they're in bed or they're preoccupied where I can sit for a while and actually do this. So keep going until you get to the end of that row and I'll meet you back at the end. All right, so now we're back to the end of that row, okay? So you're gonna not notice, you're, um, you're, not, you're, you're not going to notice, sorry, I'm trying to speak a little too fast. I gotta slow this down. You're not gonna notice the color pulling right away because you just started. It's gonna be every other row that you notice will be color pulled. So since technically we only have two rows on here, this beginning chain doesn't really matter, but this second row does matter, which is the row you just did. Every other row should color pull, which is where you're gonna get your design from. So every other row should be off by at least one stitch. If it's not, you should notice the color change or the color pulling right away after like the fourth row. If you don't, try it again. Don't be worried about having to try it again. It takes all of us a few tries to, to, to get it to pull just right because sometimes your tension isn't right. Or like me, I haven't done this in a while. So it takes some getting back into the groove of things to get it to pull right. So take your time. If you mess up, feel free to pull it out. Try it again. Keep trying it until you get it because you'll never master it if you give up because it got too hard. So keep trying until you get it. Now, once you get to this point here, essentially you're gonna do the same thing you did on this side. You're gonna chain two, which is what I did here. You're gonna turn your work and you're gonna continue to moss stitch. Now let's see if our colors go over by one. So see how that's pink there and then it changes, right? So look at that, it went over by one. See that? You gotta keep your tension consistent and you can't give up. If you give up, you'll never do anything in life. Like that's not even just for crocheting, that's life in general. You'll never get to where you want to be if you give up when things get rough or hard because the best things in life aren't easy to get, right? Right. So continue to moss stitch. A little life lesson there while I'm teaching you how to crochet. You're going to continue to moss stitch the whole way through. And like I said, it's every other row that you're going to notice that the color is going to be off by one stitch, at least one stitch. And that's what you want. You want it to be off by a stitch or two because then you know it's gonna color pull correctly. And again, if it doesn't, feel free, pull it apart. You know, yes, it will be frustrating and no, you will not possibly, probably get this on the first try. If you do, kudos to you because some of the best crocheters out there even take, it even takes them a while to get to that point where it actually pulls on the first try. So this is our, our I'm sorry, so one, two, this is our third row. So this row and this row, as you can see, are starting to pull. So we're gonna continue on. You're gonna chain two and continue to moss stitch. And if you notice, down here, this is what I mean. Down here, the pink is here, right? It's two stitches back. But up here, it starts at the beginning. So it's starting to move. And that's what you want. You want those colors to move and shift to give you the color pool look. That's why it's called planned color pulling. So you're just gonna keep going. Make sure your tension is, con is consistent. Just relax. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it on the first try. Nobody, nobody that I've ever encountered gets it on the first try. And believe me, I watch YouTube all day. I When I first did this, it took me three weeks to get it correct. Not saying it's going to take you three weeks. Life happens, which is why it took me so long to get it right the first couple of times I did it. Um, there was lots of pulling it out. There was lots of cursing, to be honest. I didn't give up. I kept going. I am one of those people that when it comes to crocheting, there is not a pattern that has stumped me that I have let just go and be like, yeah, I can't do this. No, never. And I don't use patterns. I am a visual learner. So I will look at something and go, I want to make that. And I'll just make it from looking at it. 
I will dissect it in my head. I'll do all the math and configurations for it. And boom, I have it in my head. Now, not everybody can do that, obviously, but that's how I learn. And we're at the end again, so we're going to chain two. And look at that. The color changed again. And it's, if you look, the color pooling is changing already. So that's what you want. So you're going to continue on like this for a couple of rows. And like I said, you'll start seeing it and you'll be amazed at how easy it is. Once you get it, you'll be amazed at how easy it is that you can't believe that it took you so long to just give it a try. And I'm going to make a dishcloth size one because I don't really need a color pulled one. I mean, I can make a scarf or something with it, but I don't really need to. This is just made for the tutorial. Um... Maybe I'll finish it off and do a giveaway and you guys can win the color pulling that I use for my tutorials because I don't use a lot of the, the stuff that I make in my tutorials. Like my, the little foxy hat went to my daughter and I now have like five orders for that uh, from her little classmates that absolutely loved it. So I have to make more foxy hats. But other than that, like stuff like this, I don't really keep around because, you know, I don't really have a reason to. But, uh, yeah. You don't even have to stop. Like, if you if you're con if you're comfortable with it, keep going. I'm gonna do a few rows with you here on camera, and then I'm gonna let you go on your way and try it for yourself and see how it works out for you. I hope and wish you the best of luck with it because, like I said, it nobody ever gets it on the first try. Not anybody that I've ever encountered, and it is a tough thing to do because it's. Not just, you know, well, you need seven stitches. And then after that seven stitches, it's not a pattern, so to say, that you can follow and it magically will turn into color pulling. No. It is something that you have to keep an eye on. It's something you have to watch. After a while, you don't have to watch it anymore because you're so used to doing it that it doesn't really need to be watched anymore. You just keep going. Like, I am not having to pay too much attention to it now because I already know what I'm doing. So, and my stitches stay consistent for the most part and since I won't be stopping it anytime soon I just keep going I'm gonna try to keep it in camera here because I have a bad habit I for some reason crochet like right up under my chin for some reason I don't know why and of course today I don't have my glasses on so that makes it even worse because then I can't see it the best and I'm like is it color pulling which will stop I'll stop after this row and show you what I have to see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. And if it's not, that's okay. I'll take it out and try it again. Because even still, after, and if you are on my Instagram, um, which is Miss Crochet and Coffee, you'll see I have tons of color pulled stuff on there. I even have like the long color pull, which I probably will do a video for one day. But for right now, I just want to get the basic color pull on here because I do get a lot of people that ask me about it and I'm like, oh, well, it's so easy. And where it is easy for me, it might not be easy for you. It might take you a couple of times. It might take you a while. And that's okay because what, what's the rush? When you rush and make something feel like work, it's not fun anymore. And I said I was going to stop, so I'm going to stop. So if you take a look at it, can you see it? Can you see the pink? Now the green is doing it as well. The green is coming up to the middle. The pink is coming out to the outside. So the more I go, the more I go into this, it's going to be the pink. It's going to go out and then in. The green will be in the middle with the brown, and you're going to get a really nice finished product. So I'm going to keep going because I like color pulling. It's like as in the great words of Selena Baca, when you get a pattern, especially one like this, it becomes stupid easy, and essentially you're like mindlessly doing this and I can sit and do just about anything while I do this now like I can sit and watch tv I can you know listen to a book I can do whatever because I already know you know what I'm doing and so I don't really have to stop essentially I know the pattern in my head now and as long as I keep that pattern and I don't mess it up or you know something happens where I mess up my tension I should be fine so we're just gonna keep going keep going keep going and again, if you need to stop the video, re-watch the video from the beginning, please feel free. 
You know how many times I've had to rewatch videos for this because I'll forget like how many to chain? How do I start it off? Do I use the whole chain at the beginning? Do I not use the whole chain at the beginning? Like it's not something that, you know, is constantly embedded in your head. Sometimes you need that refresher course. And for me, that happens a lot because I can't store everything in my head. Like if I stored all the knowledge I have about crocheting in my head, like it, yeah, no, that's why they make YouTube. So I can go back and check my work and make sure that everything is, you know, what I think it is. Because if I went off everything that was in my head, yeah, no, this would be a hot mess. And the other problem I used to run into when I would color pull was that my first diamond, which is what it's going to look like uh, when you get to that point, my first diamond would be really fat and little, but then the rest of them would be amazing. And so I'm just like, oh, well, I did that wrong at the beginning, but the rest of it looks great. And you can choose to keep that in there or you can pull it out, which I'll show you that here in a few minutes when I finish this row. You can pull it out so that, you know, only the best part of it shows. But of course, you want to make sure that the size is correct and everything else. So that's completely up to you on how you do that. But yeah, so you're just following the pattern. Chain two. All right, so we have our color pulling starting there and you can see the green literally shifting. Do you see it shifting on both sides? That green is in the middle. That light pink is coming to the middle. The brown is shifting out. The dark pink is also shifting out. And that's what you want. You want those colors to shift because without that color shift, it will not work. If you're finding that your colors are starting to perfectly stack on top of each other, obviously you're doing it wrong. And that's okay. So all you can do is try again. That won't hurt you to try again, right? Right. Sorry, I gotta take a sip of my coffee here. They don't call me Miss Crochet and Coffee for nothing. If you know me, I literally drink coffee all day. All right. So when it comes to this long tail, now if it's driving you nuts, you can do this part first. It doesn't drive me nuts for the most part because no, normally by the time I get to this point, I don't even realize it's there anymore. But for those of you who it is driving nuts, what you can do to get rid of it is this. One, you'll end up having to cut it at some point. But I'm going to get my seam ripper out here. I do cross stitching as well, so I always have a seam ripper just sitting over here chilling. But uh, got my seam ripper here. And hold on a second, there's something on it. What is that? I don't know. I think one of my kids might have used it for something. Or my husband. Probably my kids. But, uh, okay. So all you do is you find a little knot in your slip stitch there. Which, if you use it, I, I wouldn't suggest using a seam ripper because obviously you're not wanting to rip the seam or rip the yarn. You essentially just want to pull it out. So if you have nails, you can just take it and pull. See how easy that was? You just take it by that knot and pull it. And then you just pull. All crocheting is is a bunch of knots. A bunch of knots that essentially that you place strategically in a certain pattern to make it look like something. Like I just made a dog sweater for a friend and I think she was kind of surprised at how long. It only takes me a couple of hours to do a dog sweater, especially since she has like a little tiny dog. Now, if I was making one for my dog, like I have the Siberian Husky, which I would never make a sweater for because he's a Siberian Husky. He likes the cold. But uh, I have a German Shepherd as well. And if I was to make her a sweater, that probably would take me like a day or two to complete because, you know, I have kids and a life and other stuff to do. But her dog's like two to four pounds, and I'm like, yeah, that's going to take me like two hours. It's a little tiny dog sweater. And if you guys would like a dog sweater tutorial, since winter is coming, and if you're anything like me, I'm not, I don't mind winter, but I hate being cold. I love snow. I hate being cold. And because I'm Southern, and I did spend majority of my childhood in South Carolina, I didn't see snow very often until I was like 15, 16. And then the first snow I saw, I wrecked my car, which if you want to hear that funny story, uh, 
in one of my previous diamond paint with me videos, uh, I talk about my car accident in the snow, which I like to listen to those videos whenever I'm crocheting or something, because then it kind of is something to help me zone out. Now, when you get to where you want to stop it, what I do is there's always going to be that loop on your hook. You see the loop? Loop, loop, loop. What you can do is, and when I, whenever you take a stitch out, always make it super big so that if something happens where it gets pulled, you don't pull out the stitch because then you're going to get mad. But I put my hook in there and I draw that string back through. Essentially, essentially you're doing a slip stitch. Boom. Look at that. Now that's where it ends for me. So all that that we had there is now gone. And then if you want to get rid of it, you get your handy dandy scissors. You may know these scissors being featured are from my daughter's book bag because I have yet to put them back. Again, don't judge me. And you just boop, snip it off. There you go. That tail's gone. There's your tail. Snipped it off. And you just have this little piece. Now I wouldn't advise snipping it that low, especially if you're if you're until you get the pattern until you can see the pattern I wouldn't snip that tail off because you might need it so only when you start to see the color pulling pattern do you want to snip your tail off because again you want to make sure you keep the pattern of what the colors are so for the camo yarn whether it be the blue or the pink which I believe they're the same like the color changes are the same size you want to get those four colors I think it's four. Was it four? It was four. Light pink, dark pink, brown, and green. So that's four colors. So you want to get those four colors. Make sure you have those four colors. And then you want to try to color pull, tear it out, try it again, tear it out, try it again. And then when you finally get it and you start seeing a pattern, do like 10, 15 rows. And then if you decide, okay, I got it now, that's when you want to take care of that tail. Because you don't want to take care of it early and then have to cut off more yarn than you're willing to waste. Because now this is just extras. And if you're like me, what I do with my extras, like if I snip off yarn from a project or something, I have a little container that I put it in. And if I make stuffed animals, and I don't even know how to say the stuffed animal name in crochet, so please forgive me because I don't usually make stuffed animals in crocheting anyways. Not unless specially requested. But you have to be really, really special for me to make one because I hate making them. But I keep all my tails and my loose ends, and then I stuff the stuffed animals with it. Smart idea. Good way not to waste yarn. All right. So we're going to keep working on this. I'm going to do essentially the size of a dish rag. And then when I come back, you'll see the pattern that is formed from my color pulling. So I'll see you back after a couple of rows. And we're back. As you can see, you can start to see the argyle start. If you look at the pink here, it's a little choppy. That's because it's the beginning and you, you don't quite get into the groove until that first one hits right here. Now, as you can see, um, with the light pink, it makes an X and it's starting to come out. So your, your light pink will be your next argyle that it will start there and it'll kind of veer out and then come back in to make a diamond shape um, like the one down here did. Now, if I would have done a full row of that pink, it would have made a diamond shape. But because it was our first row down here... Uh, the beginning chain doesn't show, it, it, essentially the beginning chain doesn't matter, it's every row after that. Like I said, you want to make sure your color change is very consistent. So you want to be all, like you want your colors to shift over by at least one stitch. If it's over by more than one, your argyles will be different shapes, which is what you get here. Uh, as you can see here, my pink, where on this row, it's right here, this row here, this pink should have started right here. So to remedy that, all you would have to do is essentially, if I would have caught that, you pull it out and you tighten your stitches or you make your stitches looser. Making your stitches looser or tighter, which you can play around with this to see which one will work for you, but making your stitches looser or tighter is what's going to get you the result that you want. When you start to struggle and you get to a point where your stitches aren't going over by one. Try working, try pulling it out. And if you're all, like, if you're off by, if you have two, like here, I should have, instead of uh, it being off by two here, 
what I could have done is made my stitch stitches a little looser, like pulled it out, made my stitches a little bit looser so that this pink stitch here should have started where this one is. But I didn't do that there. I wanted to keep going because I wanted to be able to show you guys the shape. So let's see if I can get it to do it up here. So we're over one in our pink, so we know that one's correct. Like I said, you want it to be over by one. If it's over by more than one, it will not come out to be the right shape. So you're going to just keep going. And I was having problems with it throughout, you know, me doing it. And yes, you heard right. Anybody who works it, there's no guaranteed method. So you'll have to play around with your stitches just a little bit uh, whenever you're working on something like this. Like here. Now. I am going to, all right, so on this one here, on my brown, if you can see it here, this brown stitch starts right here, but my other one for down here is over here, so my first stitch should be right there. How do I remedy that? Well, what you do is you pull it out and you tighten your stitches. Now, you want to relax when you're doing this, because if you don't relax and try to take it easy, this is what will happen. Your stitches and your tension will be off, and you won't get the result you want. So you want to play around with it when you find that you've made a mistake. Instead of ripping all that out, getting frustrated, giving up, no, no, no. You have to stay persistent with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to tighten those stitches. I'm going to tighten them so that I'm not using as much yarn. So that hopefully I get that brown to start where I want it to start at. So there's the brown starting exactly where I want it to start at. You see that? So instead of starting here, which was two stitches over, I got it to start here by tightening my stitches so that it is correctly aligned with this one. Because as long as this is aligned with that, not the second, not the row right underneath it, but the one underneath that row you're working on. As long as those two are at least one space over, you're going to get the argyle stitch. If it's more than one stitch over, say you're two stitches over, pull out what you're working on and loosen your stitches. If it's, say, right on top of it, you're going to want to tighten and, and loosen your you, you essentially want to play with it to make sure that you're at least one stitch above where you want to be here because you don't want the colors to stack. Okay, so there I tighten my stitches and essentially you want to keep your tension because if you don't, again, it, it'll happen where your count will be off or not your count, I'm sorry, your color will be off and you won't get the result that you want. So we're going to work through this brown and see where we come out next. Now, the next color in that row is going to be the green. So I want the green to start here. See how it didn't start there? It's not going to start until I get to this stitch, which is going to be sitting essentially right on top of, let's see, that's the color change right before the green. So that's exactly where we want it, actually. Actually, no, it's not. We want it to be here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a couple of stitches. No problem. And like I said, you will get frustrated with it, but don't worry about it. Just keep going. Keep trying. Don't give up on it. Keep trying. I'm going to loosen my stitches a little bit. So that that color change starts right there, which is one stitch over, which is exactly what I need. I need it to be one stitch over from the one on that second to last row. So then I just keep going. And, you know, every once in a while when you're not paying attention, you will run into these problems. Just remember to play with it a little bit. If, you know, you have the color's not in the right spot, loosen your stitches or tighten your stitches to see if you can get it to go into the right spot because loosening or tightening is the key to fixing that issue. So like right here, I don't want my pink to start here and why not? Because I don't want it to stack. I need that pink to start right there. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to pull out two stitches and I'm going to loosen my stitches. I'm going to make them a little bit looser. Oh, and I'm not going to have double crochet. I'm going to loosen my stitches to eat up more yarn because I need it to eat up more yarn so that whenever I go to make that first stitch, it's in the pink color. So that's one chain, that's two chain. So then there we go. There's the pink. It starts right there, right where I need it to. 
again, you have to play with the yarn a little bit sometimes, which I just saw a mistake I made, so I'm going to go back. See? Mistakes happen. And that's probably why you didn't pull correctly. It's because I forgot to do that chain. And that will happen. If you forget to do that chain one, that will happen. So you can always go back and that let that be your first rule. First, check to make sure you got your chain one. If you do, try loosening or tightening your stitches to see if you can get it to go over to where you want. So if you're over by two, tighten your stitches. If you're over by two or under by two, Essentially, you're going to loosen your stitches. You, again, play with it. Play around with it. See what you did or if your tension was off a little bit. See if you forgot to chain one. I make that mistake often where I will forget to chain one somewhere. And I'm like, oh, crap. You know, I forgot to chain one here. So, we're going to keep going here. And see if that chain one was the reasoning why it wasn't pulling correctly. And I was correct. That was the reason because I forgot to chain one. See, those simple steps will make it where you essentially will miss where you're supposed to be at. So we're going to keep going. And then we want that pink to land right there. See, that's perfect. And you essentially want to keep your stitches, your tension consistent because you want to keep following that over by one. Everything has to be over by one. Because if it's not over by one or if it's over by more than one, it will not work out correctly. So then my brown is here and I need it to start there, which is exactly what it's doing. Keep your tension. And like I said, nobody ever gets it on the first try. And if you do, congratulations, you're one of few that have done so. I, like I said, it took me three weeks just to get this and lots of swatching, which if you don't know what swatching is, it's the technique of practice. You essentially are practicing to make sure, and here we go again, but before I show you that, you're practicing to make sure you're getting something done correctly. So say, you know, you, you want to try it out on a color that, you know, because they have a list of colors that are approved and not approved, but technically, I believe you can get just about any varinated color to color pull. Um, so essentially it's a trial and error most people will tell you that if you crochet a lot of it is trial and error you have to essentially fiddle around with things a little bit to see if you can get it to work for you and that's essentially what you're going to do but right here see how my green starts here well my green up top here starts way over here it's two stitches over so what do i have to do i have to tighten those stitches so what i'm going to do is I'm going to tighten those stitches. Because then I need that green to start right. Nope. See, we're going to try it again. Hold on, let me mute my computer here. And sorry if you hear clanging. It's the doggies. They're walking around listening to me talk to myself, essentially. So we're going to tighten stitches here. You might see a pupper dog snout in the camera, and if you do, I apologize. It's Daisy. She apparently thinks or wants something. So now that we're tightening those stitches, that green's going to start right where I need it. Perfect. Success. And see, that's all it takes. It It's trial and error. You want to try out swatches, you know, to see which colors are going to work for you. And then essentially from there, it's trial and error. Any pattern you work is going to be that way, not just this. But this is more so, this will help when it comes to if you have a problem with keeping your tension the consistent. This is definitely a great way to, to, to learn. Because if you don't keep those stitches consistent... It will not color pull correctly and you will get a bunch of little fat chubby uh, stitches and then a, a lot of elongated ones, little fat chubby ones. So if you keep it consistent, it should be a perfect diamond shape. And here we go, color change again right where we need it to. And again, when you're looking at this, when, I, when I'm talking about my rows here, and as you see, it's like 
you have to keep everything uniform. You're not going to skip a stitch or anything and see how perfectly it is. This is like perfect scarf shape here. So what you essentially want to do is when you hear me say I need it to be one stitch, you know, wherever. You're not talking about the row you're working in. You're talking about the row underneath that one. So for this row, my top row that I'm, this is my working row. Okay, this is the row, obviously, because there's my loop that I just put on and keep going. So when I go over by one stitch, it's not by, it's not by these, it's by this row. So this row is the row you're working into. This is the row you have to look at. So this is over by one, and this is over by one. And if I continue on correctly through my next color change, my brown should start, let me take a look at it here. My brown should start right here. So let's see if we can get it to work correctly. And again, if it doesn't, tighten your stitches, loosen your stitches, play around with it to see what you have to do to get it to work correctly because you want those colors to pull perfectly because once they pull perfectly is when you're going to get that design that you want. All right, so, yep, there it is, right where we need it to. And then we're just going to keep going here. And then there's our next color change. Now, our green starts here, which means for this one, it's going to start right there, which is exactly where we need it. And then our pink should start right here on this corner. And why? Because the pink started here. So over one, let's start right there, which way, which would start the next row in that color. Another way you can figure out if you're doing things correctly is count how many chains you're going to, or how many stitches you get out of that one color. Like with my pink, with my light pink, as you can see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And essentially there's like a little pink right there. With the dark pink, you have, there's a little pink here, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then let's see if we can find a brown one. All right, here's our brown. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the green. One, two, three, four. You want to make sure you have the correct stitch count for all of those because then that could also hinder you getting the argyle shape you're looking for. And yes, this might sound very complicated, but I promise you it's not. You just have to stay very persistent with it when you're working on it. As long as you're persistent with it, everything will come out exactly the way it should come out, okay? So I'll meet you back once I try to get one completed diamond done. And there you have it. That is your Argyle pattern that you will accomplish whenever you do the planned color pulling. At the end here where we start it, you'll see that it starts the pattern where it starts to go up and then weave back out and then go back up again. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now, it won't always start off like this. It won't always start off veering up and then going into the diamond shape. Sometimes it'll start from the bottom and you'll start seeing it progress. If you see it start like this, that's okay. If you see it start like that, that is also okay. This, like I said, this bottom, the first row that you did won't really matter. It's what happens after that first row. As long as this is your finished product, you're perfectly fine. Now, like I said, you have to have patience and persistence when it comes to this pattern because not a whole lot of people get it right on their first time. If it is your first time and you get it right, congratulations. You are one of very few that have get it, gotten it right on the first try. It took me, like I said before, it took me three weeks to get this down. And even now, I still have problems and struggle with it whenever I do do it, mostly because I don't do it very often. And it's not because it's hard or I don't want to. It's just because between taking orders and everything else, it's not the most, you know, it's not the quickest thing if you don't know what you're doing. Now, if you know what you're doing, this works up extremely quick. 
Like I was able to do this in probably like half an hour. Um, this is great for scarves. If you want to make blankets with it, of course, the color pattern, you would, instead of following it just once like we did here, you would follow it a couple more times to make a blanket pattern to whatever size you're looking to make it to. I have not yet made a blanket with the color pooling. Um, I've only made scarves and there's been actually a couple of beanies that I've made that weren't really planned color pulling. It just kind of happened. So you can always play around with it. And different yarn will give you different patterns. Like this one here gave us this pattern. There's another one that gives you more of a solid color in this little diamond you get down here for when the colors start to merge together. Um, either way, as long as this is your finished product whenever you're doing your co planned color pulling, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a diamond shape. And that's how you know you're doing it correctly because you'll get the argyle shape. And as you see, the pink is going through the light pink here and the dark pink will start another one section like this where it'll start off at the bottom and then veer its way out again. And that's how you know you're doing it correctly as well. And as you can see up top here, it's slowly starting to push its way over to start this pattern up again. So that's, again, how you know you're doing it correctly. Again, it does take a lot of time and patience when you first start trying. Don't give up. Just take a deep breath. Take your time with it. This is supposed to be fun, not work. The moment you make it into something that's a chore or work, you're not going to want to do it. So if you have to, take a step away from it. Take a deep breath. Come back to it at a later point in time. But don't give up on it. I would love to see what you guys come up with. And if you would like to show me, please feel free to tag me on Facebook or Instagram at Miss Crochet and Coffee so that I can see if this video was helpful to you at all. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the section, the comment section below so that I know that, you know, you actually are trying and you're having some issues that I could possibly help you with. So I will try to answer you to the best of my abilities if I can. I'm usually pretty active on my YouTube channel, so you'll probably get a, don't be surprised if you get a comment back almost immediately. Um, also, if this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know that this is the kind of content you guys would love to keep seeing on my page. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe so that you can see more videos like this and maybe possibly some diamond painting um, on my channel. Right next to the subscribe button is a bell. If you don't know what that is, that gives you a notification that lets you know every time I post a video. And that's helpful because my videos go up very randomly. I don't know when I'm going to put them up. They sometimes go up in the afternoon. They sometimes go up in the late evening. But this way, if you hit that bell, you know exactly when I posted my next video. So feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you know when my next video is going up. This is all for me today. I hope this was helpful to you. Again, my name is Miss Crochet and Coffee, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.